Fair make their money is they make a commission, so they they, they have no skin in the ta- on the table at all, right. right? There's no risk for them whatsoever. Their best result is to match as much money with whoever wants to match it. They just match the two people together, hold it in escrow, pay out by taking their little bit of commission. So with them, because of because I do a lot of peer to peer stuff, and because there's no skin on the table for them. They look after me because I turn over a certain amount of money with them. So unlike I can't get any uh, you know, comps or anything like the guy you're tell- talking about with Crown with bookmakers here in Australia because I win with them. So they don't they're not going to offer me any comps you know there's no there's no value in it for them to to say hey you're a gr- you're great for our business please keep turning more money over. Um, so really, Betfair is the only place. Um, there are a couple of other exchanges as well. Matchbook, BetDAC isn't here in Australia, but there is, you know, so Matchbook's I think is the only other one. But Betfair and Matchbook is the only two really where I uh, am encouraged to win, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, 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 and I get comps out of them for, okay. for actually winning. Because they win it either way. That's it. They, right, they, they, there's they, no they, casino, they're not... They make money just on turnover. That's very cool. It is. They are, mate, they, they are killing it. It's just a license to print money, that joint, you know. You know what's brilliant. interesting to me out of this whole conversation? Tell me. Is that um, I'm of the opinion, right, because my, my old man has, made, has a huge uh, business. And I've always looked at him going, damn, how the hell are you do?" And he has like 100 staff and he's to this day he's – He's rah, he's yelling at this guy and blah, 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 and, you know, balancing everyone, making everyone's happy over here, but being as hard as nails. Right. I've always gone, how do people um, uh, succeed? How do they make money? And in the, my own personal opinion, from watching a great man, I'm talking like a multi-million dollar businessman, mm. right, who was a welder, okay? He came from nothing. A welder, do it. Very much it's about your personality and your, your little early, early start of life. So my old man is still fighting for that, like that $1 that he wanted when he was a kid because they were poor, right? So to this day, I could take it to a factory that, that is like, uh, I think it's three, three acres that he's owned for 25 years and he'll pick up a screw that he knows is worth a half a cent and go, Fucking, what's this doing on the ground? Yeah. And go ape shit. Yeah. <laughs> because it's worth a half a cent and, you know, it's still very valuable. These little things that started off. So, uh, you know what I mean? I get Whereas you. he created through, through that, my life was a little bit easier. I'm fucking flaring through high school, <laughs> Rochdale High School. Just, I didn't have the, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I've got to bring it back to you now. How do you get this want? Where, mm. what's your story? Yeah, mine is is definitely uh, it's the you know the no money story. It's the you know the and this uh, <laughs> what, what did I read on Twitter the other day? Someone said um, you know the, the, talking about traders or something. And they someone had posted someone's story about how. You know, they were once sucking dick under a bridge. You know, that's how they... Who has it? Yeah, you know, like... And, 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 and the guy sort of said tongue-in-cheek on Twitter, he's like, you know, if, if your story doesn't include sucking dick under a bridge, I suggest you put it in there because it just makes makes this, the whole story so much yeah, better, right. you know? Like, and, and I, you know, it's such a pisser because, you know, it is for me. I mean, for me, it, it was... We weren't rich when we were younger. It was, you know, the, probably the same sort of stories as as your dad you know it was just that like striving for something more something better something something that I hadn't experienced before um I think that's that's where it really sort of came from uh for me and um yeah I, I and and it's but it's it's a weird thing because for me like the more that i've the more that i've sort of got uh the more that i've wanted to hold on 
to to it. You know, like I think when it's super you, important. Right? Yeah, I think like when you when you start out sort of making some money and whatever, it's like I want to hit the home. I want to hit a grand slam. You know, I want. I want to just have runners on every base and just bash this thing 600 feet out of the park. You know, I just want this thing that just takes me like a rocket, bang, a silver bullet to number one. And it, and that, and then, and but that doesn't really, it doesn't really often happen. You know, it's more about sort of just hitting the singles, getting on first base, moving slowly, moving the run around, get them around to home. And then once you, once you have sort of the money it's not so much about hitting the 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 slam dunk anymore it changes your whole sort of focus changes from i just want to have that silver bullet to to i don't want to lose what i've what i've created i don't want to lose i know how much effort and how much time and how much blood sweat and tears you know that i've put in to get to where i am i don't want to i don't want to lose that um and that's sort of where i'm at at the moment, you know, I've, I've, mate, you know, like, yeah, I've lost, I've lost like sums of money that would just like probably just crush some people, you know, and, and it crushed me, you know, like I've, like I said, I've, I've been in tears on the ground, grabbing my hair and lit- literally I've pulled hair out of my head just going, please, you know, like I, you feel like you're just so close, you've come so close to cracking what you're trying to achieve and then you just get smacked, you know, and back you go to to, to step one, you know, and you've, you just come so close. And then once you crack it, once you make that breakthrough and get what you're after, everything changes. You go from striving to get that to just, you know, the screw on the ground like your dad, you know, you find and you're like, hey, that's still got some value and, and, and I don't want to let that that pass and 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 let that go so for me yeah you know we didn't have a bunch of money like uh when we were younger and uh i think for me it's about sort of probably giving my my offspring that i don't have yet something that um that i probably didn't didn't uh didn't get to experience i suppose so yeah i think that's that's pretty important and 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 my partner as well you know like uh yeah i've um, yeah, everything I sort of do is for that 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 future. I think it's. Uh... Well, here's my hot tip. I'm not like listening to you. I'm not going to go now and start gambling, even if there's a chance that I may may make a million dollars. I just won't because I, I, I personally stand by my belief that now you're born with this intelligent mind that takes out emotion and risk and. Uh, you know, you, you analyze. I'm because I, I've learnt through to my great old man who is very much who he is, and I've seen Muppets come and go. Guys that have worked in his own factory of one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars on the pokies, or no um, scratchies. First thing I do is buy a forty-eight thousand dollar car. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. It's gone. You know the old story. If um, if you didn't have money before. There's every chance you go, oh, my God, I'm rich, and you'll buy something stupid, and it's instantly gone. Go and Google right now. Google people that have won ridiculous amounts on the lotto. It ruins their life. They're broke within two years. They're just broke. Yeah. So, But here's my weird question for you, seeing you're you're talking about family. I, I suggest that your own kids... In the future, if you listen to this, you little bloody they will. I, I, that's what I, I got a bit, don't of, I got get a bit emotional before. You know? Yeah, but I'm don't. Just like, wow, they're going to think of this one day. You know, yeah, like well, they're going to hear it. They're going to. Well, I hope they don't this. follow your path because I think you're born in this thing. Maybe, maybe follow the same path of. Uh, don't listen. By the way, don't listen to me. No, no, you're, you're right. But you know what I mean. You know, you're right in the fact that if someone came to me. And people do come to me now and they say, I want you to teach me. I want to. I would never, ever encourage anyone to bet for a living. I wouldn't do it. Well, you'd I'd, have to analyse their personality. Well, I think. but I just wouldn't do it. As, as, as just a flat rule, I wouldn't. If they proved some, if they proved otherwise, like if they just kept persisting and then, then I'd be like, okay, maybe you're sort of cut out for it. But as, as a, just a flat rule, keeping in mind that 95% of people lose. Right, so if not, if a hundred people come up to me, right, only five people are going to be theoretically. 
right to do it. I just would not encourage anyone to do it. Wouldn't you love to be one at, at that betting school that you once went to? Yeah, yeah. They but, would see, oh my God, here we go, another fucking Muppet. Like, this guy is just going to lose everything. He's got all the bling on his arms and... They do. You they, know, you can... It's just a physical and uh, you can actually see someone who has the wrong intentions. I did a podcast last night with Brett Robbo. I think I spoke about him before. Yeah. He said something great. Um, uh, it's all about the why. Like, why are you doing mm. every, every single thing you do? Mm. It made me go, yeah, shit, why am I doing this podcast? Like, why? It, it's really important. And a lot of us don't think that way. Oh, the why is massive. It's massive. The why is everything. He said it in a, uh, a better way than I could ever, but... But the, it made me go, yeah, why the fuck am I doing this? Like, why? I really need to think about that. Mm. So you're, you've are you come from a different angle for a certain reason. My why is freedom. And, and, and you don't have to get that from gambling. You don't have to get that, you know, from, from uh, you know, betting on a sporting game. It doesn't have to be playing poker. But for me, it was freedom. It's It's... Gambling has given me the ability to pick my own hours, to travel, to uh, you know make a decent income. Uh, it's just given me freedom, and that's that's always what I've been striving for is freedom. It's not necessarily been money. Money has been sort of a byproduct of it, but really, it's just been freedom. I've just wanted the ability to do what I I picked up and went to. Europe over the Christmas break with Beck uh, for for twelve or fourteen weeks. Just picked up, bang, went, left. Catch you later. Went to Japan for a couple of weeks on the way home. Went snowboarding, and you know, you know, I had my thirtieth a month ago. You know, took a Saturday night off and and put on a five grand bar tab for my family and friends and had a. Great old time at fish shows. Did some old, some old school feels at fish shows, and you know it's, that's that's just freedom. It's just freedom to do what I want when I want. That's what it's brought for me, um, and money's just been a byproduct of that. And so that's the why for me is the, you know, when, if and when you know I have kids, if I want to stay home and. Or if I want to pick my kids up from school at three o'clock when they knock off, and I have that freedom to do that. So that's the that's what it is for me. That's the why for me, and uh, it's that's the most important thing actually. So I agree with Robbo. Why is just yeah. everything. <clears throat> Man, put it there, that Lukey was, Mack, that champion. Was that it was wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't it? It's was not so out. It's not over yet. Yeah. Tell me what your first job was then. Okay. Yeah, my first job was delivering papers. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool as yeah, well. Yeah, I used Where? to. Where? Uh, Morningside. I used to get okay. the shit. I can't even remember the name of it. Sadly, but I used to get a hundred and sixty odd papers on a Tuesday night. They'd come. And, you mean like the Redland Times sort of? Yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah? That's the sort of thing. But it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. But they. The Eastern. Yeah, suburbs. yeah. Right. But they they owned by Redland Times. Yeah, yeah, so it was yeah. the same mob, and it was the local paper. I used to get a hundred and sixty on a Tuesday night. They used. In the contract, it said they'd come at 3 p.m., which was just such a lie because I would get them at like 7 or 8 o'clock. And my brother, Matty, shout out to my boy, he used to help me. Uh, he was... Uh, Older yeah. or younger? He's younger. I was oh, the eldest good, of five. Matty. Yeah, Matty was good. He eldest used, of five? Eldest of five, yeah. Oh, he, that's critical. Yeah, and he used to help... Fuck, he that's used, critical to your personality. Yeah, probably. It yeah, is. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, he used like to, it's... Uh, you're responsible. I was, yeah. So you're responsible in your mind. You have mm. to keep tabs on certain things. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah, true. I'll well, bet your, well, he was your my... middle kid's like, duh. <laughs> like, don't bet. <laughs> Please don't bet. <laughs> Who's the middle one? Benny. <laughs> Benny, can you just put, the, put it down? Put the phone down yeah. now, Benny. No, well, Benny bets secretly. I know it. It's just stop betting. He's Benny. a good like, kid. Everyone loves Benny. Yeah, I love Benny, yeah. But he's not the responsible yeah, one. Yeah, it's right. true. Yeah, well, Matty was my, you know what? I, I just realised then, Matt was my first ever staff member. And, you know, he used to help me fold those papers on a Tuesday. They'd come in at about 7, 8 o'clock, and we'd fold 160 of them and and we'd deliver some that night and then the next morning we'd deliver them before school. 
So that was my first ever job. Yeah. A lot of the greats come from from paper routes. Do they? Right? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. yeah! Bill Burr, one of all in he? the podcasting world. Fuck yeah! He just retweeted me the other day. Shut up. <laughs> he did.